Okay, we're going to do a uh, presentation of electrical power systems um, for non-electrical engineers. Just a quick run through the topic um, in 10 minutes, which is a bit ambitious, part of our micro course series. Um, the um, idea is that we give a quick summary to the whole topic, basic building blocks, um, fundamentals and integrating electrical engineering into other disciplines. So I just want to look at the basics, design rules, selection, installation, commissioning of electrical systems. There's a lot of material here, but I'm just going to go through it all in about 10 to 15 minutes. So very much crash course. Generation, transmission, distribution, transformers, earth and grounding, power quality, protection. So first thing is electrical power distribution generation and uh, transmission. Here's your generation, here's your transmission, and here's your distribution at the end of the road towards the houses. Um, energy conversion is a critical part of the whole process. Uh, what this means is that we take uh, mechanical engineering or uh, chemical, chemical uh, materials converted into mechanical movement and then convert it back into electrical energy, which is probably the most flexible form of energy to work with, using a turbine, for example. Um, electrical generator will then convert the kinetic energy, half mv squared, to electrical engineering energy using electromagnetic induction. So um, basically, this is an electrical generator, a power station, and um, the idea is that we have a coal-fired uh, power plant. Uh, you've got your coal, um, coal burning, boiler, steam generation, the turbine, and then eventually on the transmission lines out to the particular industrial site or household. And this process is repeated in the combustion turbine plant and obviously hydroelectric plant slightly different where you've got water, obviously no droughts required. Um, nuclear power plant, another one. There's a summary of a power station overview. If you want to stop at any of these slides, just pause the uh, presentation and you can see quite quickly what's going on. Solar energy is obviously very appealing today because it's uh, uh, emission free. Photovoltaic cells are rapidly falling in price, so they can make quite a big contribution. And as someone said the other day, it's a fusion source providing power wirelessly over millions of miles. Quite amazing. Wind energy is the other form of, of uh, power. Unfortunately, wind energy does have a few challenges with um, environmental pollution in terms of the, your view of the householder or the rural guys. Uh, probably a little bit compromised. Uh, transmission of power is the next thing, um, typically at 400 kilovolts, and very high voltage to minimize the I squared R losses. Transmission towers are critical, so it's quite a big, strong um, mechanical engineering component there. And you can imagine what happens with power lines during snow, ice storms. Then we have distribution of power takes the power to homes at 230 volts. 230 volts is probably the standard used today. It used to be 240 or 250 volts indeed in uh, Western Australia, uh, down to 220 volts in the UK, but we've standardized on 230 volts. We have a substation um, that will take the uh, power and uh, convert the trans transmission, sub-transmission lines down to distribution lines here, as you can see. Um, you can see also here that you've got your obviously your transformers, oil circuit breakers, OCBs, voltage regulators, etc. And um, we push the power out at a considerably lower voltage than when it comes in at um, 400 kV or lower. Uh, AC power has three um, components: the real power, reactive power, obviously. Um, it's uh, reactive power is probably not uh, useful in terms of uh, providing uh, energy for moving stuff, 
it's a real power that matters, and this goes together with the concept of power factor, really important, and ideal power factor is one, very hard to realize that, and ideal power factor means the voltages and currents are completely um, aligned with each other, so voltage and current, there's no um, shift. If you look at this one here, you've got your voltage and current waveform shifted, and of course your power factor will be less than one. Transformers, obviously very important to raise or lower voltages. Here's the typical formula, Vs, Vs, V prim secondary over V primary equals number of turns of secondary over number of turns of primary. So this is the fundamental building block of a uh, transformer. Very simplified diagram, of course. Power transformers are very important, and obviously uh, trans distribution boards to uh, distribute the power. Earth and grounding is another very important issue. It's all about safety. Um, and then you've got earthing here, very important. Low impedance route for high frequency leakage currents. Um, and obviously the idea is that you earthing is very important to avoid electric shocks, either direct or indirect. Um, direct contact is obviously you touching something. Uh, which obviously uh, could be uh, very dangerous, or indirect is you touching an exposed conductive part to become live under fault conditions. Obviously, either situation is not good. And obviously, the amount of current going through your body will impact on your heart and, of course, cause problems. Some very nasty pictures here of um, uh, injuries caused. And obviously, the other one is arc flash, which can be pretty bad. Touch and step voltage, very important to understand the difference. A touch potential is a voltage between an energized object and the feet of the person in contact with the object. Uh, so it's the voltage difference between the object and a point some distance away. Um, so touch, here's an example, touch potential. You can see here, here he's touching something, so that's the voltage across there. And step potential is the voltage between uh, the body. So, um, obviously, the idea is to avoid um, having everything grounded or earthed. Earthing is a term used in the IEC, International Electrotechnical Commission world, which is European Pacific, Asia Pacific, and Africa. And uh, earthing is often used is a key term used in North America, Canada, and the States. And the other issues are earth conductors and electrodes, um, two types of conductors, bonding um, to tie uh, conductors together, dealing with fault currents. Uh, earth electrodes go into the ground, um, very important to carry uh, significant amounts of current as well. Um, copper is often the preferred material. Be very careful with um, corrosion of some of the uh, less noble metals when using as earth conductors. So you can have vertical rods or plates and horizontal conductors. Most of the vertical rods, uh, vertical rods, and the power quality is the other important issue. Basically, there's three primary components: continuity, quality, and efficiency. And there's a whole reason of different quality problems, fluctuations, flicker, dips and interruptions, imbalance between phases, frequency variations from 50 hertz, for example, or in America, 60 hertz, and obviously harmonics caused by variable speed drives. So short duration is a sag swell, long duration, under voltage, over voltage, voltage imbalance, voltage fluctuations. Um, here's an example of voltage sag. I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but here are the different types. And obviously, it could be enormous damage to your equipment. Voltage swells or surges, um, long duration voltage variations, over voltage. Um, it can cause uh, problems with uh, your, especially electronic equipment, under voltages when a generator can't really provide the power required. So you generally have under voltage, or they drop the frequency as well. That's another trick. It means people, the devices use less power. Variation of frequency, 
50 hertz, it's very important to keep the average to 50 hertz at all times. Um, interruptions, half a second, three seconds, momentary interruption. Three to 60 seconds is temporary interruption, a long-term interruption is greater than one minute. Those are sort of definitions that are used. Could be caused by a lightning stroke, for example, or other particular issues, tree limbs, surge. Surge protector is very important, especially in lightning prone areas, switching surges, uh, lightning surges, obviously a big problem. And this leads us on to the next topic, which of course, beside lightning arresters, is protection and um, protection of your electrical systems. Um, just to briefly talk about protection, um, you can have a solid fault or an incipient fault. Um, so the idea is that um, transient faults do not damage insulation permanently. It's quick, and a permanent fault obviously is something a bit more long term. So the insulation of your cable, which is paper based from a 50, 80 years ago it has destroyed itself, so you've got a permanent condition, permanent fault condition, which could be expensive. Need for protection, really important, prevent electric shocks, electric burns, arc flash, arc flash or arc blast, and fire. Overload um, protection, protect from hazards, over voltage, other protection, protection, overcurrent, another one exceeds amperage rating, you obviously want to protect your motors and current and your conductors. Um, and fuses are often used uh, or relays. So fuses could be quite important. Um, circuit breakers are also very important. Um, probably more so fuses. Automatically operated and you can generally reset the circuit breaker. So you have a relay circuit breaker combination. Relays and circuit breakers are used. Relay detects when to open the circuit breaker and sends a signal to break to break the circuit. So circuit breakers is very important switching loads, break the fault current. Here's an example of fault clearing current. Fault occurs here. Trip coils energized. And that's the time for the circuit breaker to open. This time here, I've just sketched it out. And there's a bit of arcing as the contacts separate. And then, of course, you've got the fault broken at that point. So the total fault clearing time is from there when the fault occurs to there when the breaker actually opens. Relays are obviously the way to uh, trigger the circuit breaker to open. Okay, and that's really a quick summary of the whole topic in 15, 20 minutes. I hope that would be give you a pretty good idea. The slides are available um, and obviously more detailed information. Thank you very much for listening in.